What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today we're doing the common elements in two sorted arrays, more array questions for Python interviews. We want to return the common elements as an array between two sorted arrays of integers. Ascending or descending is not going to matter. Um, the example, the common elements, uh, let me just quickly do this. Let's do it on soft wraps. Ascending in the order, integer ascending order. Example, the common elements between 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, and 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 5, 9, and 10 are 1, 4, and 9. So we want to just take two different arrays and tell me which two elements are the same between them. So let's first off name it up. And what are we going to take through this? We're going to take, like I said, two different arrays. So we'll just name them A and B for this argument. So now we want to create um, pointers that are going to point to each index and compare the values. So we want to have a pointer that's going to, you know, point, look at this index zero and index zero, index one, index one. And we want to find the common elements that are going to exist between. So we're going to use pointers first off to then append into a list. So I'm just going to create pointer one. And what do we think we're going to do? We're going to set that counter to zero. All right. So this is pointing at index zero for, um, for it's going to be for a essentially. And that's how we're going to tie it together. And pointer two, what do you think it's going to be at? You're darn right. Same for B. Nothing special there. So we're creating two different pointers, and we're going to tie those to A and B later uh, to uh, dictate a um, index position. And like I said, I do want to have an empty list because we're going to be appending this. Let's just keep it with proper context. So we're going to do a while loop. We want to go um, through the length of the list essentially and check the corresponding index position. Um, to know if the index value is the same, then we want to add the element to the result. If it's not the same, that's how we're going to get the, the end product. So while p1, which was the end, which is one of the variables that we created, while p1 is less than the length of a, because that's what we're comparing it to, and I love using end loops, p2 is less than, what do you think, the length of b. So while um, and it's, it's it, that both of these conditions, the point I want to make is both of these conditions have to be true in order to get to the next line of code. So if, while we're going through the loop, if a, so what does this say? So while we're going through the loop, if the index location of a is what equal to the index location of b. So if the value at that index location is the same. If the index value is the same, then we want to add the element to the result. So how do we add an element to the result? Well, the result up here is the variable that we created, which is an empty list. So we're just going to good old fashioned result dot append. And what are we appending? We want to append the value at that point, whatever P1 is going to equal for that index location of A. Since <clears throat> since they're equal, it does not matter which one you're going to add from. This could have been B, P2. It doesn't matter. The point is, if because they're the same. If you're appending your empty list result, we're only doing so when these two are equal. So whether you did AP1 or BP2, it's the same value. That's that's all that's, that's, that's going to mean. And now what do we do whenever we, um, <clears throat> we want to move to the next index location? We're going to have to simply change our count, right? So now we can actually move through the iteration appropriately. Now we want to do, we have to cover for other, oops, look at that, I forgot a colon. We have to now account for <clears throat> other instances. So what if P1, because we have if they're equal to each other, what if it's greater than, what if it's greater? What if the value is good? If, if the index at A element is larger than the one that's at the B element, we want to move point, we want to move our pointer in B only. So how are we going to move our pointer? Nothing crazy. We're just going to say P2, because again, that was our pointer. We want to move it up by one. We're only moving the pointer in point B <clears throat> since the A element is larger. All right. That's going to cover if that's the case, but we need one more condition, right? We're going to use an else. The only other possibility is that the value at AP1 is smaller than the value at BP2. <clears throat> so all we're going to do in that case is increment P1. We're going to increment our pointer 
our p1 pointer so that it can then still stay within this while loop because that's what we're doing and what do we want to return at the end of all of this we want to return our result that we have here to see what it's actually going to put within that list so let's actually run this bad boy and see how we're doing common elements and whoops a daisy get that out of the way so we can see what are we passing through we're passing through two arrays right so let's do uh one three four six seven nine then we have to do a second array because we're taking two so we'll do one two uh four five nine now we'll say ten so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six in each. They don't have to be the same. Um, all right, so let's run this bad boy. Uh, common elements. Yep. So it comes out and it tells me, you can see that, 149. Let's quickly look before we start to debug it, make sure we're good. So let's check if the init positions are correct. We're checking common elements. So they both have a one, that's true. They both do not have a three. They both have a four. They both have a nine, so one, four, nine. Excellent. So again, but this was the common elements of A to B. So you'll notice it didn't put a 10 where you would think, uh, you know, why didn't, but it's not a common element. So it is checking the B against the A as well. So let's debug this. Let me hop up here. Let's run our debug. Bring this down just for we have a little more space. So it's going to put into uh, memory our A and B arrays that we have. So this is just our two variables, P1 and P2. It's just going to put those in memory. We have them counter at zero. Nothing special there. The result, same thing. Results is a variable. It's an empty list. Now we're going to do our first of all. PI is less than the length of A. Well, the length of A is, what was it, six? One, two, three, four, five, six. It is six. right now PI, uh, P1 and P2 are both zero, so it's definitely less than length A. And P2 is also less than length B, so it's going to run through that, that while loop. And it says if AP1 equals BP2, result append A with P1. So they did one and one are the same index position. So P1 was zero, the index position P2, so it was B0, A0. Well, A0 is one and B0 is one. So they add each other. So we're appending our result up here. We're adding that value, which is appending with the value of A to P1. It could have been B, it doesn't make a difference again, because they're equal to each other. But now we want to move our counter from index position zero to index position one. And the same thing for both lists. So. Our P's are going to change. Now we're going to go through our list again. And do they equal? Well, now we have a three and a two. They do not equal. So it's going to go to our else if. Is the A, is the value larger? It is larger because in A it's three and in B it's two. So what is it going to do? We're going to go down to our else. P, we're going to, we have to increase our iterator. So now we're running through the loop yet again. Now we're finding our, our we added, it added four, it appended four. I'm trying to see if we can see a list better. Because now at index position two, we have a four, and index position two, we have a four in both lists. So they are equal to each other. So we're gonna increase the iteration of both. Our pointers, we're gonna go through our list again, and we're gonna find that it is not, the next position is not true. Now we're at a PI of three and a P2 of four for our positioning. So three and then four is because they're not gonna equal each other. So we're increasing our counters now to now match each other. Now they're back to four and four because we went through our else loop. You're gonna see that, that third part of the loop come into play when we get to the number 10. Going through, same thing, five, four. Results, they did equal, they both equaled nine. Position one was at five, so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. We had a nine, and that's position four, zero, one, two, three, four in B2. So it did, they did match up. They were equal, so it is going to append it. 
Now we're at six and six, so that's going to be uh, a nine and ten. So it's going to return the result because we're outside of our while loop. We no longer have our piece. And if I bring our console up, we have one, four, and nine. So it took us out of the loop simply because when we got to the uh, Pass the pistons to six. We have one, two, well, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So when the P1 and P2, the pointers became six, it's outside of a range. It's outside the array. It's, it's, it's not permissible. So it's going to take us completely out of the loop and then hit the return, the next executable code, which is the return result. All right, this is a pretty simple exercise, guys. Uh, run through it, play with it, see what else you want to do. Um, change up the numbers. Remember, this is all about finding the common elements, so do it with different sequence of numbers um, and do it in different orders and you'll see different aspects of the code as you debug it.